on We Act Radio in Southeast Anacostia, D.C. Greetings, family. How's everybody doing this evening? I hope everyone is well, is well, is well. You're here with me. I'm Patty Patton, and I'm the host of Truth to Power. And in order to, to uh, find the truth, the false must be removed. So we always speak truth to power. So this evening, I have another very, very special guest. Um, I met this guy because of the profound things that he has posted um, on his page and on his YouTube page as well. You know, I don't know if you guys are aware, but I'm very, very much into the uh, esoteric of what's going on. I am a Sagittarius, and we kind of dig deep into philosophy, into things, and trying to, you know, get to the context to understand um, many things. But this is um, about life and about, you know, what holds us back from being who we truly, truly are. So my guest this evening is Seth Kazboza. He is a transformational psychologist, practitioner of the occult sciences, and a magician, a shaman, and founder of Black Earth Productions, along with the Blue Flame Healing Arts and Occult Science. Greetings, Seth. Are you there? Hey, Patricia. Peace. Good to be talking to you on here. Yes. Finally. After five years. Yes. Let's say something real quick. I got to say something real quick. You are the first person to actually hit me up for an interview. And what's been developing since then, it's very, very interesting to uh, be able to come full circle with you at the moment and get into everything we're about to. Wow. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, yeah. awesome. Well, I really appreciate you. And, and like I told you before, you are the first non-black guest that I've had on my show. <laughs> so we have some diversity going on right now. And it's all good, you know, because as I told you before, you know, um, the black community, you know, needs to, 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 to have information that they may not be able to get, you know, um, in mainstream. You know what I'm saying? And I'm right. just really happy that I was able to meet you and, um, you know, everything is, is, is in alignment with what we both want. You know what I'm saying? For our people, for ourselves, or for the ones that really want to be awake. So this evening... Um, I basically kind of, and we're just going to start here. I, I, I basically uh, started the show off with um, information about the, the, the I, was, I was about to say the Jedi, the Druids and the, and the Twa. And um, I kind of want you to just start with a background of who you are and your lineage and your ancestry so you can give the listeners a little background about you. Absolutely. I can say that my connection to the ancient Irish is very, very strong in context to the shamanic tradition that I practice also with the Nordic tradition, which is what I'm tracking on more nowadays than I am in context to the ancient Irish. But it's very, very strong with me. And there are connections there in the the black Irish, right? Uh -huh. And see, getting into that, how the world was in ancient times is not how it is today. With the landmass, continents of the earth itself, and in ancient times, all of the landmass of the earth was together. Right. One of the major things that I'm touching upon lately is the ancient wisdom councils that are meant to come together again. Okay. And there's many people in your community um, that I have high respect for. Dr. Phil Valentine is one of them. Right. And a lot of the other uh, metaphysical uh, practitioners and, and teachers that have absolutely confirmed a lot of things I've looked into. And there were cataclysms that took place over 560 million years ago. That's, that's how far I've been able to trace it. Not just my blood code lineage, but my cosmic lineage as well. Mm -hmm. And when these cataclysms happened, this is when the pole shift took place. This is when the Great Flood took place. This is when the splitting apart of Pangaea took place, and then the Ice Age. Okay. And then at this time in history, this is when everything was fucking lost. And since then, 
we've been working with fragments, fragments of consciousness. Now, okay. it's important to recognize that everything in the universe is energy, vibration, frequency, and consciousness. Okay. And there are dormant codes there within the true core essence of who we are that are starting to awaken again. And this is why there's a lot of angst. That's why it, it seems like things are still imploding because people don't have the viable proper knowledge that they need to be able to make that connection back to their true roots. So the blood codes, but also on a cosmic level. Okay. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let me stop you right there because I know my listeners are like, woo! All right, everyone. Um, my guest this evening is Seth the Kazboza. He is a teacher and a practitioner of occult sciences. And we're speaking this evening, um, up, well, we kind of started off with the Druids and the, the, the Twa because the Twa was a, um African um, group that lived in Ireland. Now, let me ask you this. Was, is it that they, 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 I know they lived in Ireland before the Christians got there, but they, yeah. they, they lived along with the Druids, and they, uh, they actually taught the Druids a lot of their magic. Is that true? What I was getting into about the Wisdom Councils, every race and tribe had this knowledge. Okay, so every, every, everything, okay. Every, listen, everything I actually practice, everything goes back to animism. Can you spell that for me? Can you spell that for me right quick? It's A-N-I-M-I-S-M. Animism goes back to the ancient tradition of all races and, and cultures. Before the institutions of religion and the systems of domination and control set themselves in place in our reality field, when the cataclysms took place, along with the invasion of fallen angels and all this crazy shit, right? Right. And it's important to recognize that this is a fact, this has actually happened. But the way that it works is through the blood, it's through the bloodlines. And in context to slavery, let's just go there. Every race and culture on the face of the earth has been enslaved by individuals that have set themselves in place to be in the positions of domination and control, even our people. And one of the biggest factors I think that all of us across the world are, are dealing with is this victim mentality that is no longer going to serve us for where things are going. Because in this interview right now, there's a potential bridge that could be built. Mm -hmm. And going further into the tradition of, of my ancestors in context to the to the Nordics, Odin abhors racism. And this is something that I think a lot of white people have forgotten. See, see, see my people don't even know what the fuck their roots are. They are insane to think that, you know, whatever worldview they have, that they're going to know who the fuck they are otherwise. And this is the same with every race and culture all across the world. Because again, at one time, we all sat at a round table. The ancient shamans, the ancient druids, along with the Geeky and the Volva, and then other cultures as well, were, were at that table. And see, this is what I've been essentially sanctioned to the Twa. That's a very interesting thing to get into. Yeah, it is, because, you know, what, 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 what I found was is that the Twa were the ones that, you know, wore the headdresses, the uraeuses that had the uh, cobra on it. And I got into this whole thing about St. Patrick and basically killed Druids and, and the Twa in Ireland for the sake of Christianity at, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah, let's talk about Christianity for a second. Okay. Um, yeah, the Druids were first oppressed by the Emperor Tiberius Claudius Nero mm -hmm. in Gaul by orders given to the Roman Legion. Um, and further, the Druids were eventually almost completely wiped out with the insurgents and the in Inquisition of St. Patrick. So any Irish person out there that celebrates St. Patrick's Day, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> right, because they don't know the context of it. Right. And as far as I'm concerned, St. Patrick was a Vatican assassin. And he was the one that drove the quote-unquote snakes out of Ireland. These were the serpents of wisdom, the mm -hmm. druids, and, and every race and tribe. Again, going back to the wisdom councils, we all had knowledge of the secrets of the universe. 
And as far as I'm concerned, people want to argue this shit, you know, which race was first and all that. We all have always existed. All of us. All of humanity comes from the Great North. Now, this is a lot to get into in context to the cataclysms, because when the pole shift took place, the polarized caps then froze. And the true gateway into this reality field was sealed the fuck off. And for the last 28,000 years, all of humanity has been caught within the fifth cycle. Going back to the history about Atlantis and Lemuria and all of that, Egypt. But see, that there, there, there was existence and, and humanity even before that. There's been many cataclysms that have taken place, and there's a lot of overlay in context to trauma, trauma-based mind control. The thing with the Dark Ones is this. This is one of their actions. Cut a man off from his roots and you will have a slave. Right, because, you know, like you and I were speaking the other day and I was telling you, you know, how, you know, people of other cultures can go back. You know, they know what their last name is. You know, they know they they, they, they know what that is. But as far as uh, Africans that were enslaved in America over here, there's 55 countries in Africa. And out of those out of those countries, you know, the ones that are over here, like people, Ethiopians think I'm Ethiopian. You know what I mean? Like we had to make our way out of nowhere, you know, but still of the, you know, the Akasha yeah, records. And, in, con- you know, huh? yeah. and in, con- in context to the slave trade, they, they were given the name of their slave owner. Right. Right. Basically. And, you know, I was thinking the other day, I was like, you know, um, these missionaries went around the world and, and told people about Christianity. What was wrong with whatever traditional spirituality that they were practicing before they got here, you know, were taken away? You know, why did it have to be such a concerted effort to convert to one thing? Christianity was the insurgence of savior programming, the, the religion of domination, keeping people in that victim mentality. And I don't negate that. I have respect for all races and cultures because I know for a fact that every race and culture has been enslaved to these insane motherfuckers. Right. And the dark priest. Are you there, Seth? We're going to take a quick break. Take a quick, quick break. We have um, a little bit of technical difficulties. Um, but um, you tuned into Truth to Power on We Act Radio. This is Patty Patton, and my guest this evening is Seth the Cusboza. So uh, let's fix this issue. We'll be right back.
this evening, I have a very special guest, Sethicus Boza. And before the break, um, we were speaking about animism and bloodlines. Are you there, Sethicus? Yes, I'm here. Okay. So, you know, you were speaking about animism, and I, and, and, and I just need you to break that down for me one more time. What is um, animism? Animism goes back to the shamanic tradition of every race, tribe, and culture. Now, the word druid itself means doorway or the door. Educated in, in the arts and sciences, they were the teachers, the judges, the bards, the shamans, and the wizards. Okay. And the word Celtic means knowing the wisdom of the oak tree. Okay. Now, this in context is everything to do with the true universal tree of life. The name Boza literally means keepers of the sacred tree. Mm-hmm. So I'm directly connected to this via my blood. It's not just like some history that I read in some books. I've literally been through the initiations to be in the position that I am. Right. For anyone to actually be initiated into Druidry, they, they would have to go through a 20-year shamanic initiation, depending on what their disposition was among the ancient Irish people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and this, this, of course, wasn't for everybody. Mm-hmm. But the memory of all of this is still there within the dormant blood codes of many European and Indo-European people. And unfortunately, most people don't give a shit about this kind of stuff, which is why the world is the way that it is, because everyone's been cut off from what actually connects us to what I term the planetary Templar. And the planetary Templar is that round table where every person among the councils, every race and tribe, sat after the cataclysms took place. And this is why religions like Christianity, basically going back to Abrahamism, in context to the Sumerian Draconian Empire. I say Sumerian Draconian Empire. Egypt is far more ancient than Sumeria. Well, as, as, as we say, Kemet. Kemet. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Black land. And this, in a sense, is why I call my Black Earth Productions, because the blackening stages of alchemists, that's the first thing that you go into, is the blackening stage. Nigredo, that was the very first part of the initiation. Mm-hmm. And getting into alchemy and the higher cult sciences, it's dangerous for people that actually don't go through the initiation. And this is what's happening, because a lot of people are experiencing things on the supernatural level. People want to talk about aliens and archons and a demiurge and angels, right? Right. <clears throat> and more and more people are having these experiences because the blood coats are awakening with every race, tribe, and culture across the earth. It's literally pushing all of this trauma to the surface where people are starting to have interactions with, with this sort of stuff. Let's just face it, the, the wisdom councils need to be reinstated. I want the listeners to know you can call in and ask Sethicus any question if you'd like or have a comment. The phone number here at We Act Radio is 202-889-9797. And my guest this evening is Sethicus Boza, and he is breaking down some serious, serious, serious stuff right now. All right, brother, go ahead. Now, it's interesting. Mm-hmm. There was a daughter of an Egyptian pharaoh named Skopa who actually married the founder of the Scots and the Gales before being exiled from Egypt. And she was the first queen of Scotland. Mm. They named Scotland, Scota, in honor to her. And again, she was the daughter of an Egyptian pharaoh. And that name is only found in the Irish legends. Okay. And you got to understand because of the Inquisitions and all of the you know, burning of the libraries and, and, and the um, systems of domination control that are that are basically still trying to wipe out any any knowledge of our ancient past. This is what we got to get back to. Right. And you know what I, what I found interesting is that the, the Druids and the Twa were working together um, yes. and they were creating, you know, magic and they were doing so much together. The Romans came in and just killed them all you know it's just like it's just like i just okay go ahead i'm sorry just i I just i just wanted people to know that that we were working together you know absolutely 
Right. Absolutely. And and we were all connected to eternity. Mm. Eternity. Not these infinite feedback loops and time cycles that we've been caught in for the last 28,000 years. Okay. 28,000 years we have forgotten. See, the stellar activation started back in the year 2000. I really went through a very intense shamanic initiation mm-hmm. and uh, set me on my path. And in 2017 is when the end of the great year happens, the end of that 28,000 year time cycle ended in 2017. Mm-hmm. So right now we are entering a new age. We're coming out of the age of Pisces, going into Aquarius, the age of knowledge, the age of technology, right? That's why technology is at the forefront. What Aquarius is really trying to let us know is that we are the true technology. Mm. And we have the ability to travel the stars. If I want to, I can take about five minutes and I'm gone. I don't need to get into a goddamn rocket ship to go to the fucking moon. All the planetary spheres. These are stargates of consciousness. And again, going back to what I was saying, we all have our celestial origin. Now, when it comes to the Irish people, when it comes to the Scots and, and Danish, our star origin is Aldebaran. Wait, wait, your star origin is what? Aldebron. The auburn hair, green eyes, blue eyes, all of that. Mm-hmm. This is the, uh, the, the the physical manifestation of those stargates of consciousness here in our reality field, because here in Midgard, all worlds of consciousness converge. And there's there's a lot of things happening in multi multiplicity. There's a lot of streams crossing and a lot of confusion. Because we're all still working with fragments. Mm-hmm. See, this is what I've gotten into in, in, with my personal practice. And, I mean, we'd be talking for the next 10 hours. Right. How you and I got connected, you know, about the Twin Flame Union, that whole thing. I hold that energy, and, and you definitely hold that energy. The Twin Flame goes back to what was once known as the Twin Sun. Twin now, Sun, the twin okay. Twin Sun. Let's get into that a little bit. All right. Because this was the original home of, of humanity before the cataclysms took place in this sector of the universe. Mm-hmm. Okay. And after that, we, we came here to Earth. Okay. And it's, it's crazy to think about how this happened, but everybody's got to stop looking at everything from a two-dimensional linear perception. Mm-hmm. We're talking metaphysics here. We're talking about the secrets of the universe. And the twin sun was Maldek. Um, another name for Maldek is Tara. And there's, there's the hill of Tara in Ireland. And oh, yeah, Tara Hill. They built the hill of Tara as a reminder of their true origin, which was Maldek. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was every race, it was every tribe. Okay? Mm-hmm. All, all has this knowledge within their blood codes. Not just the blood codes, but the soul codes. Yeah, soul codes. Cosmic consciousness. What are the soul codes? What are soul codes? Soul code genetics is everything to do with stargates of consciousness. A few of them I'll mention. One of them I just did was Alderaan. Mm -hmm. Others are Orion, the Pleiades, Lyra, uh, Specta. What about the star Sirius system? Yeah, Sirius as well. I have ancient Syrian e genetics from the third seating. Okay. And this is listen, this is going back millions of years and it sounds crazy, but but I've been able to go into this because I've been through the process of initiation. Now everybody is connected to something, right? Mm-hmm. But humanity is not going to evolve until we learn to remember that the heavens above are within us. Mm. Okay. You can look at a nebula and it's the same workings of the nervous system. To really get into the blood codes and, and, and dive deep and make connection to the ancestors, you got to go into the blood. And Carl Jung himself even said, our true history is not found in books. It is found in the blood. That's right. And an important 
factor to that is the fact that we are the accumulation of our ancestors. Now, right. does everyone in my bloodline know what I know? No, they don't, because they weren't the one that went through the initiations that I did. Right. I went through that 20-year shamanic initiation to be in the position that I am. And the original purpose of coming to Earth after the destruction of Maldek, which is now the asteroid belt, not only is it the asteroid belt, but it is the moon and the rings of Saturn. Uh, more coming on Black Earth Productions, so that's going to be getting into this a little bit more. When that cataclysm took place, consciousness was fragmented. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, getting into the arts that I teach, the moon is a reflection of how our thought and emotion operate. People want to hold on to that victim mentality. Mm -hmm. They want to hold on to blaming whatever. That is exactly where the dark priest class wants us. Mm. They want us fighting amongst ourselves in the midst of amnesia and, and total chaos, magic, and slaughter. And the reason why I think a lot of people deal with what they deal with is because they don't know who they are. You can ask anybody out there. You can even test it. Just do, do a survey. Ask people at random. If you were to tell me who you are, what would you say? And just observe what they, what they tell you. Oh, no, most people are going to tell you what they do for occupation and what their job is. And it's like, no, I didn't ask you what you do to, to make, you know, fiat fucking currency. I asked you, who are you? Right. I'm like a caterpillar in fucking Wonderland. And getting into one of the arts and sciences that I practice, which is the tarot along with a lot of the other things that I do actually practice that we all knew at one point. Again, like I was saying, the original purpose of coming here to Earth was to be a partaker of the biospiritual regenesis. This was why the wisdom councils were formed. This is why they need to be formed again. Well, let me ask you this. It, you, you said people don't know who they are. How do we identify who we are because i i know what i mean what what i what i know what know thyself is and i know it's a process so and i know how i became awakened because there was something within in, within me that just was not satisfied and then i got awoken into spirituality of who i am from um an african context so what would you say when 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 people Say, well, I don't, I don't know who I am. How do you know who you are? Well, I definitely encourage people to check out our services page, the Blue Flame Healing Arts and Occult Science, because people talk about that. They say to know thyself, but okay, how do I actually do that? This is the arts and sciences that I teach with the first initiation into the occult, into that secret knowledge. See, the real secret knowledge that they don't want us to know is the book of life that is you. Mm. Hmm. And these arts and sciences, so far, every uh, initiate has been experiencing very, very powerful results. Yes, it gets in the blood codes, it gets in the ancestors, and that's a very important part of it, but it's not the whole spectrum of what's actually needing to take place to learn to remember who you are, okay? Mm -hmm. And the Blue Flame Healing Arts and Occult Sciences is, is where I start with that. For anyone that's just tuning in right now, you're tuned into Truth to Power, and your host is myself, Patty Patton, and my guest this evening is Seth Kasboza. And um, we're speaking about metaphysics. He kind of started off with an introduction um, from his ancestry, his lineage, which were the Druids and the African context of where the Twa, the African um, group Twa, came from in um, Ireland. At this point right now, Seth because I wanted to kind of just touch very, very lightly on this twin flame because, you know, we don't use the, the name twin flame, but people are very um, familiar with that. Um, can you speak a little bit about the twin flame thing and what's going on? Because every time I turn around, it's like five million videos about twin flames and everybody's in love. And can you just speak just okay. briefly on that? Well, if people want to get a full dissertation, go on to Black Earth Productions and watch my videos called Blue Flame and, and Human Evolution. Mm -hmm. Now, the twin flame, going back to the twin sun, the original home of the human race in this sector of the galaxy that we are currently in, 
Maldek was the twin sun. When the sun hit it, it literally lit up in that, like another sun. Mm-hmm. It's a water planet, much like Earth. An important thing to recognize real quick before I continue is that Earth is a seed planet. That's why it's such a high commodity in the fucking universe. That's why all the shit is going down here. Because there are very, very, very few seed planets. Seed? S-E-E-D? Yes. So what does a seed planet mean? Well, think about how many trillions of life forms actually exist here. Oh, okay, got you. See, humans are narcissistic. Because Mm. they have forgotten animism. Their connection to nature. Their connection to the animals. Their connection to the rocks and trees and rivers. And everything that is actually there. We, we are living in cities crammed in death culture where propaganda is just hitting us left and right every fucking day to create that divide and conquer first within ourselves and then with one another. Now, you want to get into twin flames. Right. True twin flames are holders of the original template. And there's an agenda that came out with the New Age taking occult knowledge, inverting it, and then propagating the idea that everybody has a fucking twin plan. Right. One of the people I'm in that work with that wrote a book about the distortion and context, her name is Evie Lorgan, and her book is called The Alien Love Light. Mm. Now, true, authentic twin flames are going to have knowledge of the cataclysms. They're going to have knowledge of, of literally fucking everything going back 560 fucking million years. Right. Whether it's dormant or it's in their waking consciousness, they feel that there is something far, far beyond all this fucking bullshit. Yes. Yes. I definitely do. Right. Now, no. an authentic twin is going to have direct connection to what I term creator source. Mm-hmm. And, when two potential individuals that, that hold the original template come together, that energy is amplified. Mm-hmm. We came here for a mission. We came here to reinstate right. the wisdom of the ancient fucking councils. Right. Okay. In context of Maldek being the twin sun or the twin flame mm-hmm. consciousness. Mm-hmm. Because like all the planetary spheres in the solar system, which is what I term the solar spiral, that knowledge has been fragmented Mm -hmm. people get into the arts and sciences and study the asteroids gets into the deep deep trauma that you're actually dealing with as an individual on a metaphysical level right (laughs) you got some deep deep information here seth because these words that you use to describe you know certain things i'm i'm not familiar with but i also follow dr jill pukram and she speaks about the council and everybody coming together and so forth. And where well, she has something to do with it. Um, she's a immortalist. She talks about melanin. Um, that's, that's her whole thing about melanin as an intelligence. And um, as the African people hold um, the greater amount of melanin and we don't really even know how to utilize it. Do you have any any right. information about that? That's the thing when it comes to magic and the higher force. If you don't know what you have to work with, you're not going to know how to wield it correctly. Right. You're just not. And this is why the initiation is necessary. And that's why a lot of the schools, like the one that Phil Valentine has created, is absolutely powerful. I have high respect for that man. He has yeah, done a great work and... I just want to say that because as far as I'm concerned, a lot of the knowledge that's starting to come forth now in context, it's going to start increasing. Mm-hmm. The codes are awakening. Okay. And people are going to be given an opportunity unlike we've ever had in, in the last 28,000 years. Now, is this meant for everybody? No. Am I here in service to humanity? No. I am here in service to truth in context of being connected to that. And if people want to know that, then maybe we could have a conversation. I'm not going to get sucked back in to all of the feedback loops and time cycles that we've been caught in. We don't have time for that anymore, and healing is number one. 
learning how to navigate and, and remember who you are and making connection to your ancestors via the blood codes. Right. There is so much there within you. So much more there within you than you're ever going to find out there. Mm. Because of our connection to eternity. Right. Going all the way back, all the way back, every race, tribe, and culture. We have always existed. So listen, I wanted to ask you something about number synchronicities. Because um, at least seven years ago, back in 2012, is when I started seeing different um, number synchronicities. And maybe some of the listeners, you know, may have experienced that as well. Um, Are those some kind of um, codes that um, are coming up, you know, from our consciousness, from our higher self? What are they? Yeah, anytime you see a number letter sequence, pay attention to what you're thinking about. Right. Erica Badu, you're so funny. Erica Badu, I asked her about that because she had a bunch of numbers on one of her songs. Um, the uh, the advertisement for it, it was like an airline ticket. And I asked her, I said, what's up with these numbers? She said, it just reminds me what I'm thinking about at the moment. Right. And anytime, it's not just on the clock, but, you know, you can see it on the billboards. You can see it on the license plate. You know, just strange synchronicities. It's, it's just like a signpost throughout the day. Pay attention to what you're thinking about. Because if you're thinking fucked up shit, you're not in alignment with your true core essence. And everybody on Earth has a true signature core frequency in connection to what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And if we're not connected to that, then we're not going to see the signposts. We have actually left ourselves even upon before incarnation. Right. Because everybody here, we knew what we were getting into on a higher level. We just take a risk coming here because of all of the stuff that we're actually having to heal through. Unfortunately, it ends up projecting itself out into the world on an unconscious level because people are in denial. They're in denial of the fact that they're completely disassociated and then they want something to blame. Okay, As victim consciousness. Yeah. And this is everybody. This is my people. This is your people. This is everybody is dealing with this. And this is one of the main issues as far as I'm concerned. Do the real work. It's not going to be handed to you. It's not going to be necessarily even shown to you. You're going to have to get a passion for this and want to know it. Yeah, readers and seers and intuits, they have been trying to explain to me, you know, to look at things on a soul level instead of a mundane because that's really what where the reality of things are not what it looks like um you know because people can play out their life based on what they think it is instead of actually going on a soul level and aligning with that you know right and and i and i know for sure you know what the numbers are concerned they are a frequency um and there are answers to questions um, when you see certain numbers at a certain time. I had been seeing the number 717 since 2013 when I when I met my divine compliment. And I just could not understand why I kept seeing 717. And, you know, just in the last maybe two years, I really realized um, what it really was. You know what I mean? We are the ones giving meaning to our existence. And no one's going to give it to you. You got to give it to yourself. You got to give yourself that that purpose of existence. Again, going back to the bio spiritual regenesis, this is being offered to not only every race and tribe, but every known being in the fucking universe and even beyond. So, at this point, you know, what do you think the people need to do? The way showers, you know, the the ones that are supposed to lead people back to heal themselves. What do we actually need to do into this energy we need to hold our position because we come up against a lot and it's very easy i think sometimes for people to get discouraged especially if you got people creating a smear campaign and you have to take courage you have to take courage and actually know what you are connected to and know what you're talking about and can, and can actually back it up 100 percent. everything i've gotten into with you i can back it up right a reference for it a cult reference not mainstream knowledge Right, esoteric. It's not up to me to decide for anybody else. But if people actually do this, if they actually do the real work, 
they're going to come to a lot of the same conclusions that I have. Before we actually lined out this segment, you, you mentioned that you wanted to get into the Tawata. Tawata de Danan. And we got a, we got two minutes. Oh, you do? Yeah. Well, I'm not going to be able to get into it. <laughs> we got to do a part two, Seth. A lot of people listening and looking and seeing what's going on. And, um, you know, it's time. 360 degrees back where we were before, and we can manifest so much in this space and time right now, correct? And if we catch it now, making connection back to our true roots, then we're going to potentially see a timeline unlike anything we've ever seen before. It's up to us because the torch is being passed. It's a question of whether or not people are going to have the courage to take up the mantle of responsibility for the future generations. I'm doing everything I can to remind my people of what their true roots are. And I encourage everybody out there to do the same thing because the history is there to be accessed and it's all real. Everything that I'm talking about today. So. Well, I, I so appreciate it. I, I'm, you, you have a plethora of information here. I'm going to make sure that I go back and take some notes from it. For the ones, the listeners that want to get in contact with you, how can they get in contact with you and, and utilize your services? If anyone wants to get a hold of me, send me an email at blackearthproductions at hotmail.com. Check out our website at blackearthproductions with a Z at the end.com. Check out the services page. I've got a lot more coming. I've got a lot of projects I'm working on. i got a lot of students I'm talking to. And things are advancing. Things are growing. And it's very powerful what's happening right now. And if people want a proper initiation into the occult, even beyond the knowledge of, of the ancestors, getting into universal consciousness, then definitely hit me up. Uh, if people want to check out the videos that I presented, go on to YouTube and just throw in Black Earth Productions into the search and have a great time exploring. Yeah. <laughs> right, because I sure did. That's how I met you. Seth, I thank you so much for being my guest. And hopefully, you know, you and I can come back again and, and, and do this on this show or maybe in another platform, um, because I think the information is important. And, you know, we have to realize, you know, that everybody don't hate everybody. You know what I mean? Um, and that, that people of different cultures and backgrounds can work together because that's, like you said, how it was from the beginning. And that's what I knew about as well. So thank you so much for being my guest this evening, and uh, we'll talk to soon, okay? Okay. So, you all, I hope that you enjoyed this, this broadcast this evening. You know, I'm very much into esoteric sciences and information and knowledge because that's where we really got to get to the nitty-gritty in order to be able to understand what self-love is truly about and what our power is because you are the power. This is Patty Patton. I'm signing out for Truth to Power. See you next time. Peace and love.